There's nothing better than a nice piece of buttered toast for breakfast, if we're not counting hot fudge sundaes. But if you find it harder to spread out cold butter over your toast, here's an idea. Use a cheese grater. Figure out the amount you need and grate the product. The process will also soften the butter, making it easier to spread, and you won't have to melt a too large amount of it in the process. But still, that hot fudge. Dried pasta comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes for a reason. That's because each type of pasta goes best with a particular sauce. Pasta shells, for example, are perfect with denser and chunkier sauces. Why? Because the sauce gets inside the shells, making it easier to serve and eat the dish. The ribbed outer surface also helps with covering the shells in the sauce. If you ever end up burning your cookies, ow! You can save them with your trusty grater, too. Just grate off the blackened parts after carefully taking the cookies from the baking tray. But be careful and wait until the cookies have cooled down. Also, if you ruin their shape a bit, you can always dip them in some melted chocolate. Ooh. After the chocolate cools down, you'll have perfectly shaped cookies. Although, after it gets past your lips and beyond, does the shape of the cookie actually matter? Mm, just saying. If you like adding a lot of ingredients to your sandwiches, but don't really appreciate it when the bread gets soggy, there is a way to reduce the amount of moisture. Pick your sliced tomatoes or cucumbers and place them between two paper towels for up to 5 minutes. After that, you can use them. Also, make sure to spread butter, cheese, or sauces, like mayo or ketchup, onto the bread first. This will help you seal the bread and keep moisture at bay. Some people think that the little white string that you find near an egg yolk needs to be removed before you cook the egg. Well, I'm here to tell you that these strands are called calaza, and you don't actually need to get rid of them. They help keep the yolk in place at the egg center. A calaza is not going to mess up the consistency or the taste of your food, so removing it is completely up to you. Ever notice that most juice boxes come with two flaps, one on each side? Those are actually handles. Manufacturers design the boxes this way to make it easier for us to hold them. This way, we don't end up squeezing the box, making the juice spill out. Now, you don't need to be a baking pro to know that you can use both white and brown sugar in your recipes. But have you ever wondered what the difference between these two is? It turns out that the only thing that sets them apart is that, during production, a small amount of molasses is added to the brown sugar. Molasses is basically a sort of syrup you get when processing sugarcane. It's usually removed during the refining process. That's how white sugar is produced. But if some amount of molasses remains in the final product, we end up with brown sugar, with its specific taste and darker hue. It's a good thing. There are a lot of things you can put in your dishwasher apart from your dishes. For example, you can clean such things as your silicone oven mitts or the knobs of some kitchen appliances, like your oven or stove. Some kitchen sponges and reusable towels may be safe to clean in the dishwasher as well. Speaking of kitchen cleaning products, there are a lot of things you can do with dish soap, like degriming your patio furniture. Just add a bit of dish detergent to some warm water and use the solution to wipe down your outdoor furniture with a piece of cloth. Finally, rinse it clean using your garden hose. You can also use dish soap to get rid of greasy stains on your clothes. Be it pasta sauce or salad dressings, hey, sometimes we miss our mouths. So just apply a little dish detergent to the stain and then rinse with water. Use non-colored soap for lighter clothes. For more difficult stains, let the dish soap sink in for a bit, then throw the piece of clothing in the washer as usual. And think about maybe getting a bib. If none of the methods have helped you organize your closet and you're still overwhelmed with large piles of clothes, there's a simple way that might be effective. It's called the one-in-one-out rule. That means for every new piece of clothing you buy, you need to get rid of one you already have. That means you'll always be decluttering your space. To make it easier to find something in your closet, good luck, keep your most used items at eye level. This way, they'll be easier to find and pull out when you're in a hurry. Those items that you tend to use less often, like your evening clothes, for example, can stay on the shelves above or below your eye level. 
you can make good use of old spice tins. If you glue some powerful magnets to the inside of the tins, they can double as magnetic shelves. You can use them for all sorts of everyday items, like kitchen pliers, ice cream scoops, mm, or even cutlery. You can also place them on any metallic surface, like your refrigerator door. They'll blend in nicely with your kitchen magnets. Hidden in your laundry room, there's a great tool for picking up pet hair. It sometimes works better than lint rollers. Take a dryer sheet and, using some elbow grease, you'll get rid of that dog or cat hair in no time. It works on all sorts of surfaces, but it's especially effective for upholstered furniture. Now, if you don't like it when a door starts squeaking whenever you enter a room, get a bar of soap and rub it straight on the hinges. This will only help for a while, though, but it'll do the trick until you manage to get to a hardware store and, you know, buy some oil. Have you ever noticed that in some elevators, there's a star next to the number of a specific floor? No, it's not to indicate where my office is. (laughs) It's there to point out where the nearest exit is. And it's not always on the first floor. It's most likely located on the floor closest to the street. Have you ever wondered why stop signs are red? Well, back in the day, they didn't actually have any particular color at all. Before the 1920s, they didn't even have a standardized shape. In 1922, though, someone came up with the octagon. But initially, it was painted yellow all because the red coloring tended to fade out too quickly because of sun exposure. So yellow turned out to be the best option. It took another 30 years for fade-resistant enamel paint to be invented. We ended up changing the color of the stop sign back to red. After all, it's still the best color if you want something to be easily noticeable. Do you know there's a type of rose that can grow taller than people? According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the tallest rose bush ever found grew in Vienna, Austria. It was a staggering 28 and a half feet tall. Yes, it arose to a great height. In the same way we all have unique patterns on our fingerprints, no two tigers have the same set of stripes. It makes it easier for people working with this feline species to distinguish one tiger from another. I'll bet you didn't know the White House has its own flower shop hidden in the basement of the building. It's supposed to provide flower arrangements for all sorts of events that take place there. It's probably no surprise that pizza has become an American staple dish despite its Italian origin. People in the U.S. love it so much that they buy 350 slices of pizza every second in the States. Man, I'm not getting my fair share. To manage the huge demand for this delicious dish, around 17% of all restaurants in the U.S. are pizzerias. Finally, there's a way to make lemon juice without the seeds getting into your beverage. Try cutting the fruit in two and squeezing it with a pair of kitchen tongs. The pointed end of the lemon should be facing down. The juice will flow down, but the seeds will remain inside the lemon. Ooh, lemonade. It goes well with pizza. If you look at it on the street, you'll think a fire hydrant is about 3 feet in height. But the actual size of the device used to provide water supply to firefighters all over the world is twice as large. That is, if you count the rest of the hydrant, which is hiding underground. They're mostly red, and it's not just a matter of urban design. First of all, they need to be of bright, easily noticeable colors, so firefighters can spot them fast when they need to. The choice of color depends on how much water the hydrant can hold. It can sometimes vary depending on the location, but here's the breakdown. A red fire hydrant can splash 500 gallons of water per minute, while an orange one at least 1,000 gallons. Green ones mostly process 1,500 gallons of water per minute, and the most plentiful ones colored blue can generally contain over 1,500 gallons. Hey bowling fans, isn't it super annoying when your bowling ball gets cracked? Turns out that most of them get damaged because of incorrect storage or spikes in temperature. Now come on and face it, since it's already cracked a bit, aren't you curious what's actually inside the bowling ball? Cause I sure am. Let's have a look. They mostly make the inner core of the ball of powdered metal oxides, like calcium or iron oxide. They mix them with some resin and catalyst to harden the whole mixture. So that light bulb shape you now see inside of the ball is actually its heaviest part. It also influences how your bowling ball rotates when going down the lane. The same goes with spray paint cans. 
When you shake it, it makes a weird noise. But what is that thing in there? It's called a pea, and it's meant to hold the paint mixture in place and maintain its shape. They generally make it out of plastic, metal, or ceramic. It basically acts as a whisk to make sure your paint is well mixed together before you apply it to your surface of choice. Ever wondered how soda bottles keep that refreshing fizz for that long? Well, they have a little plastic ring fastened to the lid. They place it there to keep the gas from escaping and making the soda go flat, even if you shake it around in your bag the whole day. Speaking of things we use on a hot summer's day, wait, wait, don't put your baseball cap on just yet. Take a look at it for a minute, and you'll notice there's a small button on the very top. Is it functional, or is it just there for the sake of design? Way back when people started using fabrics to cover their heads, some say the button was actually functional. Since it's on top of the cap where the fabric panels come together, the top button helps keep the cap crown in one single piece. Now, with recent advances in fabric and pattern design, the button is more of an aesthetic feature. It's used to cover up the joint point of the fabric panels. Your cap might not have a button at all, but don't you think a cap actually looks better with one? Cotton pads have two sides, and if you take the time to look at them carefully, they're actually different in texture. Just in case you've ever wondered why, the textured side is for applying makeup, and the even side is for removing it. Bookworms, this one is for you. Dust jackets that come with a lot of hardcover books are not just meant to make your book look pretty, they also double as a bookmark. Just fold the pages you've already read underneath the inside of the jacket, and voila! Next time you reach out for your favorite shirt, take a look at the top buttonhole. It should be stitched horizontally, and all the other ones are vertical. Turns out that the dress shirt was designed this way, since the first and the last buttons were the first ones to unbutton throughout the day. They then changed the direction of the buttonhole to ensure the shirt would stay nice and fitted before you're ready to take it off. These days, we have so many variations of this awesome dessert that it's hard to imagine we've ever lived without it. You can find different types of cookie dough ice cream or even chocolate chip cookie cake basically everywhere, but the famous cookie wasn't actually invented until 1930. The story goes that a woman named Ruth Graves Wakefield was preparing some chocolate cookies as she was waiting for some guests to arrive. She soon figured out she was out of baker's chocolate, a crucial ingredient for the classic cookies. To fix things up, she chopped up a block of semi-sweet chocolate, thinking it would eventually spread out evenly throughout the batter, given the heat of the oven. Things didn't necessarily go as planned. But hey, it's great they didn't because this is how she invented this modern dessert we now can't get enough of. And speaking of popular snacks, the potato chip is even younger than the chocolate chip cookie. Well, at least historically. There are many stories trying to explain how it was invented. One of them goes like this. A chef named George Crumb, based in New York, put the chips together in 1953. He decided to try a different cooking solution when one of his customers didn't have nice things to say about his french fries. He said they were too thick and kind of mushy. Then, Crumb came up with potatoes that were thinly sliced and fried until brown. People absolutely loved the dish, and they welcomed the first ever batch of chips with open arms. Ice cream, anyone? If the story is true, back in 1904 at the St. Louis World's Fair, one ice cream shop owner ran out of cups to serve his dish. So, he fashioned a waffle into the shape of a cone, and the rest was history. Okay, I'll admit it, chewing gum-like treats have been around since the ancient Greeks. So this one isn't particularly a revolutionary discovery, but the actual gum we buy today wasn't there until the late 1800s. An American inventor named Thomas Adams wanted to mix together different chemicals to create rubber. He tried and failed, for that matter, to play with chicle for his experiment, but ended up fashioning this neat treat. They still use chicle to this day to produce most chewing gums. Back in the 1800s, there lived a man named Jean-Baptiste Joly, who worked in the fabric industry as a textile maker. How he came up with this next invention that we use a lot these days has less to do with him and more to do with his maid. The story goes that the woman accidentally knocked a kerosene lamp over onto a tablecloth. Instead of getting upset over the damaged fabric, Jolly noticed that the substance actually made the material cleaner. Figured it out yet? Yep, that's how the idea for the very first dry cleaner popped up. A very neat accident, if I do say so myself. Now this one I loved. Did you know matchsticks were initially called friction lights? 
or at least that's how their inventor, a chemist named John Walker, called them back in 1826. He scraped a stick coated in chemicals across his hearth, totally by accident one day, and realized that they ignited and created a spark. Initially made out of cardboard, they were then made using wooden splints and sandpaper. Back in the 1940s, a man named Harry Coover stumbled upon a chemical formulation that seemed to stick to everything it touched. The scientific community at the time didn't look much into it as the formula didn't seem to have many applications back then. It wasn't until 1951 that he looked a bit more into the formula and decided to repurpose it. Along with a fellow Eastman Kodak researcher named Fred Joyner, they gave it a proper full name. But you must know it by the shorter version, Super Glue. It also has many uses in security these days that it's hard to believe that we didn't come up with this one on purpose. Back in 1903, a scientist named Edward Benedictus knocked over a flask by accident. He looked down and was amazed to see that the glassware had just slightly cracked but maintained its shape. He was expecting it to break into a million tiny pieces. Curious about this hidden feature, he looked into it and figured out what was keeping the glass together was a substance coating the inside of the glass. Ta-da! That's how humanity came up with safety glass. Extra hole in the upper part of the sink. It has a name and everything. The overflow hole. And it's designed to keep the sink from flooding. So, in case someone forgets and keeps the faucet going for too long, or the sink gets clogged and water can't drain down from the main drain hole, the overflow hole comes in to save the day. Let's say it buys you a little time before you have the entire bathroom floor flooded. Have you ever noticed how satisfying closing the door of a car can be? Car manufacturers devote a great deal of time to designing these sounds. Studies have shown that they create a perceived sense of quality in the buyer. It all begins with the primary material. While older cars used to be made with heavier materials, car doors nowadays are produced with lighter tin, which can make a rather unpleasant metallic sound once you shut them closed. So car companies employ sound engineers to ensure that there is the exact amount of foam, mats, and tin in a car's composition to make the most comforting sound possible. And what about those tiny dots on the top of your car's front window? The pattern of these little black dots minimizes distractions for your eyes. This black part, also known as frit, normally gets warmer than the clear parts, which prevents the windshield from deforming. And no, the tab under your rearview mirror is not made only for the purpose of hanging fluffy dice or aromatic-pleasing air fresheners. It's actually a switch that allows you to adjust the position of the mirror depending on the time of day. Flip it one way, and it's the daytime driving mode. Flip the other, and you're ready to drive safely during nighttime as it tones down the glare coming from headlights of the cars behind you. Next time you head out to the supermarket, make sure to keep this in mind. In case you don't have a coin to unlock these shopping carts, there is a well-kept secret that can help you out. If you have your house keys on you, check for a rounded key head. If you happen to find one, try using it to unlock the cart. It should fit perfectly in there, replacing the need to carry coins around. Because, if we're being honest, who still has them? Elevators. If you want to ride them on your terms, and your terms only, make sure to try something out. Most elevators have a secret button combination you can use to skip all the other selected floors and go directly to the one of your choosing. This might work out, especially on those days when you press 13, but you wanted to press 33. On most elevators, this works once you simultaneously press the closed door button together with your floor number. This should help you get to your floor without stopping. Some elevators require you to double-press the selected floor numbers, as double-pressing will often cancel the previously made request, while other elevators require you to hold the open door button and then double-press the buttons of the floors you'd like to cancel. Now, to stay out of trouble, it's best not to cancel the floors of the other people in the elevator. They won't take it kindly. Also keep in mind that there are elevators that might not have this function. Now, for honey lovers out there, go ahead and raise your hand. If your pot of golden honey is crystallized, know that it is actually a good sign. Crystallized honey means that it hasn't been pasteurized, which means better product quality. With a decrease in temperature, the natural ingredient of honey, also known as glucose, will make it crystallize. Now, try making the best of it, 
To add some texture to your oatmeal or toast, add a layer of crystallized honey and enjoy nature's sugar. And if you don't like crystallized honey, plop it in the microwave for a minute or two. Ah, winter and fall. You know what this means, right? Sweater weather. But there's nothing more annoying than wearing your beautiful wool sweater and itching yourself all the way through it. Actually, I can be more annoying than that, but let's talk about itchy sweaters. To keep this from happening again, here's the secret. Turn your sweater inside out and soak it in cold water. Add 2 or 3 tablespoons of vinegar and let it sit for a while. Then, drain the water. Now, while the sweater is still wet, massage a generous amount of hair conditioner into the fibers of the wool. After letting it soak in the hair conditioner for about 30 minutes, gently press the excess water out of the wool and leave it to dry flat on a towel. There you go! No more itchy sweater! Any fast food restaurant you go to will hand out small paper cups for customers to fill with their ketchup, mustard, or barbecue sauce. But if you're eating some chicken nuggets or trying to dip your burger into the cup, there's always that bit of sauce that seems impossible to reach. Next time, try unfolding the cup. It'll turn into a small paper plate, and this way, you'll get all the ketchup you poured in the first place. Padlocks used in outdoor environments should be clean and lubricated every three months. Regular lubrication will help prevent padlocks from freezing in cold weather conditions. Look for the tiny hole on the bottom of the lock. Then pour oil into it, and there you go! It opens again. One thing we often neglect is a point in an ointment cap. These pointy surfaces were designed to help us break the tinfoil protection of the ointment tube. You just turn the cap over and break the ointment seal with its own cap, and there you go. After a long day of work, all you really need to do is a bubble bath. You turn on the hot water and let it run for a few minutes. You might even light a candle and pour some essential oils into the water. Then, in comes the liquid soap. You stir the water until the entire surface of the tub water is crammed with bubbles and make your way in. The bubbles in a bubble bath have a fundamental primary function. Their job is to preserve the water's temperature, just so you can have warm water for longer. Do you have sweaty feet? Weird question, I know. But if you're one of these people, here's some good news. All is not lost. Try putting a dry tea bag inside your shoes and storing it in a dry place for a while. The tea bags will absorb the humidity and the smell off the soles of your shoes. So, here I am thinking, shouldn't we have learned these things in school? Well, either way, if you learned something new today, make sure to tell us about it in the comments below.